Hello and welcome everyone watching the video of we four co-hosts of Catholic Weekend. We're about to start the recording of episode 287. So it was kind of like we three kings, we yeah, we, we four, well, I was thinking, we well, four I was noobs. Thinking, I was thinking, you know, there's we we got the three stooges. What do you talk for four of us? <laughs> the four musketeers. We the four musketeers. Musketeers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's uh, take down notice in three, two. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Let's see if the uh, sound is okay. We four yeah. nerds on Saturday yes. are, are trying to proclaim. Uh, I hear something really, really odd in the uh, background of that uh, sound file. Oh, never mind. It's Maria singing. <laughs> 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 All right. I'm your captain. I'm your, I'm captain. your captain. All right. Here we go. Uh, there we go. And we are recording here. And here we go. This is SQPN, the StarQuest Production Network, leading the way. You're listening to Catholic Weekend, episode number 287 for the week ending Saturday, August 29th, 2015. Where has the year gone? Hello, I'm Jeff Nielsen, also known as your captain. I'm your captain. And joining I'm me this morning from Conyers, Georgia the lovely Maria Johnson. Good morning. Greetings and salutations. Or something like that. Also, joining us, we haven't seen him in a while, Mr. Steve Nelson in Oklahoma. Hello, everybody. Glad to be back. Except for the fact I was on vacation and I didn't want to come back. <laughs> we'll forgive you. Well, welcome back. We're glad you're back with us. And also from the wild, wild west, Father Corey Stika, from Montana. Good morning, everyone. Howdy. Uh, I love that song. Very, very smoky Montana today. Oh, wildfires, huh? Yeah, with all the wildfires in the in the west, from down the west coast and on into like Idaho and Montana, it's been bad. I mean, it's it actually last night I was driving uh, back from a meeting, and as I was driving down the road, just the air coming in from outside was causing my eyes to start to get irritated because of the smoke. Because it because we're down in a valley, we're down in River Valley here in Malta, so all that smoke is kind of accumulated down in the valley. Mm. So it's you know, kind of a nice, nice reddish color to the sky. All kinds of fun, you know. Mm. So the western got, wow. United States on fire, and uh, the southeastern United States is thinking that uh, maybe there's a hurricane coming. But I oh guess boy. The, yeah. the storm is kind of falling apart. So, so now, if there really is people who can, you know, control the weather, maybe they, what they need to do is control that hurricane so it actually kind of goes around through the Pacific into uh, <laughs> the Northwest. <laughs> <laughs> to wash away the smoke. <laughs> wash away the fires. <laughs> oh, well, that's true. Yeah. Send some of I, our uh, Acme jets with our chemtrails. And, yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I experienced that smoke when I was up in Montana a week before last, yes. and it's just terrible. It was, well, I've never seen well, anything like it. Yeah, and one of the fires is there in the kind of the area you were at, Steve, um, the town of Essex, which is along U.S. Highway 2 right on the southern mm -hmm. part of uh, Glacier, has just been evacuated for about a week yeah, they had just closed that road our last day there. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, we, but the 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 day before that, we were up in Waterton, Can Canada. Okay, that sure. whole the whole valley, the whole lake valley was just full of smoke. You couldn't even see the mountains surrounding the lake. It was, it was yeah, terrible. that's what it's like around here. It's really pretty bad. Well, speaking of Montana and what you were just talking about, Steve, uh, you had a uh, a big west western United States adventure. Tell us about that. Oh, I did. Uh, well. 
we started uh, with a little family reunion in Chicago, and that was that was pretty good. You know, I don't normally like to visit cities, but Chicago, if you if you do the touristy things and you take the tours and you look at all the buildings and everything, it's a really it's a it's a fun place to visit. And uh, they they were having an air show going on at the same time, and we got we kept getting buzzed by the Blue Angels flying around downtown, which was awesome and absolutely terrifying at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> crash at that air show, but it seems like oh, a boy. lot of air shows around the oh, world. Oh, man. No like, kidding. A lot of crashes. Well, I, I think I actually did see an accident. There was a, a, a parachute team going on, and I saw there were, you know, there were like six of them, and five of them were up at the top, and one just kept going, and I, I, I couldn't see what happened. I thought maybe he just, he intended to open his chute late. But it, I found out uh -huh. a couple of days ago that somebody actually died in that, and I don't yeah. know if it was the same event or not. But it was that guy. He uh, ended up hitting his head against another um, diver, I think. Oh. He got knocked unconscious, uh. and then he hit the uh, building, and then just tumbled down and died. Of well, I think I might have seen it, and it's weird though because oh, I, I think I sensed it because I remember saying a hail mary at that moment because I was mm -hmm. scared that I was witnessing something, but it went behind other buildings sure, and I couldn't sure. see what happened. <clears throat> but Never mind, I guess they did have a crash then. Right yeah. I, I assume that's what I saw, but I'm not sure. But, yeah. um, but anyway, after that we took the train, went west. I got off in Malta and walked around for about 15 minutes. You have did a nice you? little town there. You, they actually stopped long <laughs> enough in Malta for you to get off? Yeah, they did. <laughs> and then, then we and took a picture of Haver, the next town down. But Yeah, but they stopped there too. It was well. I wasn't. I don't think I was exactly supposed to get off the train in Malta, <laughs> but I had to. <laughs> he was looking for pastry with a big basket full of whatever. Yeah, you to yeah. I was expecting pastries, Father. I don't know. It, yeah, it was yeah. really early in the morning. No, but they, uh, they, they, you know, they come on, and every time the train stops, they say, "All right, this is like a one-minute stop just to do something." Yep. And uh, so in Malta, they said that, and they said it was going to be real quick, one or two minutes, you know. And so I pushed the door open, got around, looked around a little bit, uh, and then got back on the train before it left without me. <laughs> well, that's a good thing. Uh, it was it was so funny, you know, when I'd ride the train through Haver. You know, Haver is a is a service stop, so they you know they refuel the train, they put water in it, and stuff like that. Well. The the announcer the, more often than not the conductor would come on and say you know this is Haver and we're gonna have a 30 minute break and you can get off and stretch your legs and walk around please do stay by the station because if the train leaves the next one is in 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So. And and the and the and there's no and there's no overpass or underpass for you to be able to uh, to take care of uh, yeah. your night's lodging right. Yeah, yeah but... I'm sorry. I just got distracted reading something that popped up on my screen. Sorry. <laughs> Is it from me? Yes. <laughs> yeah, there we go. We're having that static thing thing going on again. That's I hope it's... weird. I hope it's not me. No, I think no. it's Bria. So as soon as she muted herself, it it stopped. I don't know what no. it is. Hmm. Uh, Google Hangouts just doesn't like Maria. Hmm. No, apparently not. But. You know, you don't have to mute yourself the whole time, or if you want to say something, then unmute yourself. <laughs> <laughs> she's just giving, she's just staring at me and giving me. She's giving us dirty looks. <laughs> Doesn't well, take. Should I, I may tell you about the rest of the trip, or? Yes, I would love for that. Okay. Well, we survived the 29-hour train ride, and it was that's a strange experience being on a train that long. Mm -hmm. But I tell you, the food was awesome. I had yeah, one of the good. best steaks I've ever had in my life on board that train at 80 miles an hour. Yeah, <laughs> it was. That's great. one of the great joys of it. You just have a good meal. You have good meals as you go. Yeah. So where did where did the uh, train journey begin and end? Started at Union Station in Chicago, and we got off at East Glacier. There's okay. there's two train stops, one on the east side and one on the west side. And we got off at the east side, and uh, then we just we rented a car and we went from one of the the old lodges to, to the next lodge. Started at the what's it called the Glacier Park Lodge, I think, mm -hmm. and then we went to the town of St. Mary, and we went up to Waterton, and uh, many glaciers, and we just stayed at all these old, hundred-year-old lodges around the oh, park. Fun. It was great. Took the the Jammer Tour, which are these 1936 bright red buses that have an open roof on them. Mm -hmm. That was a lot of fun, and we managed, except for the last day, we managed 
to not have to de deal with the smoke too much. I mean, we got to see grand vistas and everything. Got to see the bighorn sheep and the mountain goats and everything. So we, we were complete tourists, but we had a great nice. time. <laughs> and ate as many huckleberries as I could find. <laughs> Excellent. I haven't done the Jammer tours yet, but those are so cool cars. Those are just so cool. Yeah. The, the I want to know what huckleberries taste like. Um, a little bit like a blueberry. I don't know how to explain it. They're, they're a berry, so it's more like a blueberry than anything else. And then when we got up to Canada, we had Saskatoon berries, which are a little bit sweeter than huckleberries. Hmm. But, you know, I had huckleberry ice cream and Saskatoon pancakes, and, you know, there's even a huckleberry beer that they make up there, which was pretty good. Was that, is that out of Kalis, Kalispell? Or? Uh, yeah, what, the Great, Great Northern, Northern Brewery? Brewery? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we had a good time. We stayed in Kalispell the last night and then uh, went over to uh, – no, we stayed in uh, – what's the town? Whitefish? Whitefish. We stayed in Whitefish, but that's when the smoke was terrible. Sure. Um, we couldn't do much there, but just kind of see the town. And then we drove down to Kalispell and got on the plane and came home. Nice. That's the sad part of the story. Yeah. <laughs> had to leave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I haven't. The, the the next sad part is when all the bills arrive. I haven't seen my credit card yet, but mm. I sort of indulged myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, you deserve it. You had a. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Mm. Oh no, I, that's what vacations are for. Exactly. So, what was the best part? I know there are so many different aspects of your vacation. But uh, what do you? What for, did, for, what you for me personally, <laughs> we uh, we took a boat ride from the Many Glaciers Lodge, and we basically drove across one lake, hiked across this little hill, got on another boat, went across another lake, and then hiked to a third lake. So we got to see three lakes in succession, and uh -huh. there's all this geology around, which I have a geology degree, so I'm fascinated by all of the tectonics and everything that happened up there, and the glaciers and everything. And so to me, that was the best part, getting out, hiking, riding the boat, seeing all the geology, being out in nature, uh, we went to You're the far end. You're not allowed to say tectonic on the air. Why? <laughs> I don't know. Play Nobody tectonics? what that means. Tectonic. <laughs> <laughs> the movement and collision of the plates that cause the orogeny, which means mountain building. Too Ooh. scientific. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a PG rating on our show now. <laughs> I said orogeny. That's a scientific <laughs> word. Perfectly... <laughs> legitimate and appropriate. <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> so did you see a lot of erogeny zones? Nasty, you crossed the line there, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, no. I'm going to put up okay. some pictures on my blog. I, I put up some uh, pictures of Chicago, but I took a whole lot of pictures in Glacier, and I'm trying to pare them down to something <laughs> usable. <laughs> Were you, did, were you just using your iPhone for the I pictures? I used my iPhone for a lot of it, but I, I have another camera with me. Did yeah, because I love your photography, and I'm just amazed at the 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 incredible shots that you get just with your phone. Although yeah. I know that the camera is pretty good on the iPhones now, but still, it's not bad. Yeah, I can't take pictures of people worth a darn, but you know, give me a sunset, and I can come up with something pretty good. <laughs> Speaking of iPhones. I lost mine, or actually, it was stolen. Luckily, what? I still had my old iPhone 5, which still works. Yeah, I was on an airplane, uh, Acme Airlines airline, I mean, airplane, and coming back from Orlando, and uh, everybody was deplaning, and I got up out of my seat, went to the bathroom, and um, apparently either I left it on the seat or I stuck it in one of the uh, pockets of my backpack. And then I didn't notice until I was outside of security that because I wanted to grab my phone to check something, and I thought, where's my phone? I went, darn it, I probably left it. Oh, no. so I went, went back, ran back, went back through security and everything else and got back to the airplane. The cleaners had just gotten on. Hey, did you see a phone? No. So I know it was on because I checked my text messages after we landed, and so I, I found I got my MacBook Pro out and connected to the Wi-Fi and did, you know find my iPhone. And it said, no devices um, found or whatever. So in other words, somebody took my phone and turned it off. Hmm. It was gone. Wow. So that was one of the reasons why we're a little bit late this morning starting the recording is that 
Um, when I do all the things behind the scenes, one of the things I do is access the uh, the back end of the uh, of the uh, website, and we use something called Authenticator, and that was on my iPhone. And mm -hmm. I went, well, how am oh. I going to do this? Because I don't have, you know, I have Authenticator on this one, but it's not matched up with the uh, SQPM website yet. And so luckily Inga, uh, lovely Inga in, uh, in the Netherlands, was able to uh, get me into the uh, site um, you know, temporarily without the uh, authenticator code. So I probably should not say that on air because the hackers right now are heading over to the site. Hackers. Again. Yeah. Hackers, just back off, all right? Well, Leave us alone. Hey, there's Shut some up. coming up. Hang, hang on to that thought, Steve, because we're going to do our first break. Um, thank you, everyone, who has contributed to the Friends of SQPN, our... Um, financial support arm of the uh, network and uh, many of the people listening and watching are friends of SQPN and you can become one too by heading over to sqpn.com slash donate or if you're on the site right now probably somewhere over there on the right hand side of the SQPN live page you'll see um, a link to uh, join all the other friends of SQPN by making a monthly contribution or a one-time gift. Whatever it is, we do appreciate it, however little or large. Um, let's see. If you want to help us out when you do your shopping at Amazon.com, uh, that's really easy to do. Just, again, head over to sqpn.com and look for the Amazon links for your particular country. And when you... Click on that. It'll take you to Amazon, and everything will be just as if you never visited our site, except that we will get some of the proceeds of your purchase. And it doesn't cost you anything more. It's just that uh, Amazon, Jeff Bezos, and company don't get as much. So um, it's a nice, easy way to support SQPN. And finally, if you are itching to get your own blog or podcast or whatever like uh, like Maria, like Steve, like Father Corey, like myself, uh, you can go over to bluehost.com. But, but No, don't go to bluehost.com. Go to sqpn.com. Click on the Bluehost banner. Sign up there. And then, uh, again, we'll get a nice fee from Bluehost, our partner. And uh, a lot of people like Steve and Maria and Father Roderick and Sarah Vabulous, Catholic Drinky, use Bluehost for their website hosting services. And from what I can tell, I haven't heard any complaints about their hosting services. So I think that we can highly recommend them. And again, you're helping support the Star West Production Network. So again, thanks for all of your financial support. All right, now we are back. Thank you for uh, that. Just kind of automatically came up in the background, Steve. So, what were you, what were you saying? Did you still have your thought? Oh, I well, it, it was a, a geeky thing. I was just wondering, like, what can somebody do with a stolen iPhone? Well, you know, I it was I, I really I kind of sort of panicked because I really never thought of this happening, and I knew that there was a way to wipe, you know, like erase your phone. Uh -huh. The problem is when you make the decision to wipe your phone, then basically you can't find it anymore. There's no way to track it. Um, so, but then if you don't wipe it and then somebody gets to it and somehow is, accesses you know, critical information that you have on it, then, mm -hmm. then you're screwed too. So I, I finally kind of after a, about a five or ten minute time frame, um, I decided, you know what, I'm just going to hit the button that says erase it. And yeah. It seems to me like it's you know it's got that identifier. You know, as soon as somebody tries to use it as a phone, they're going to be able to find it. You know, so I mean, I don't know what your carrier is, but they should be able to, you know, prevent it from ever being used as a phone again. Yeah, AT and T, make it a brick. Yeah, well, um, they can. Um, the thing is, though, they can sell it overseas, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are places, you know, unfortunately, there are places that they'll get phones like that and sell them overseas, and the carriers in some smaller less uh, or more scru uh, less scrupulous uh, 
nations will uh, go ahead and add the phone. Mm. Use it. Well, sorry that happened, Jeff. Yeah. At that yeah. point, it's lost, though. Um, I, I'd be more concerned with the lack of scrup scrupulosity and what they could have done in those 10 minutes that Jeff was thinking about. Yeah. Probably nothing. Probably well, look, nothing. You know, I have a, it's probably know, not as insidious as it was. They just saw, oh, a phone. I had a lock screen, you know, and uh, so you had to use your thumbprint or, you know, fingerprint or code to enter in. So I would yeah. imagine there was no way they could get actually get into anything. And, uh, not easily. Not easily, no. Yeah. So you know, we have put way too much of our lives into those phones. You know, though. that's something I really found out quickly is that how much of my life is on the darn phone because I kept going. Well, I need to. Do oh, I I don't have that available to me. Mm -hmm. anymore. And then when I started, you know, using this phone, I, I I you know started to go do something. I go, oh, I don't have that app on there, so I downloaded, you know, re-downloaded that. One. Oh, I don't have this one, and I realized, wow. <laughs> So much of what I do is using this little electronic device. Exactly. Yeah. You know, life didn't exist before cell phones. Oh, wait. Yes, it did. <laughs> <laughs> what? You mean we didn't always have a leash? <laughs> yeah. That's, I have a very love-hate relationship with technology, and I'm a technologist. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'd like to experience life without it. <laughs> it was interesting that, uh, you know, that ride home uh, on the train from the airport uh, was, I thought, this is in a way kind of refreshing because I can't use my phone to, to look mm -hmm. at this and look at that and do this and do that. It was like, I wish I had a book because then I could open it up and start reading, but I, I didn't have a, anything to read with me, so I just kind of... Because your books are in your Kindle app in your phone. <laughs> <laughs> It really makes you think, though. Maybe maybe we should step back a little bit, and you know. Well, yeah, that's, that's right. I love though the cartoon I saw a couple of days ago, where you see these these like this old style phone and a cassette player and a notepad and a calendar and a book and a couple other things are all circled around this phone. So we hear you're going to replace us. <laughs> <laughs> My sister-in-law and I were having that discussion about books, you know, and both of us have a, an e-reader that we took on the trip, you know, and it's like, well, e-readers are great when you're traveling because you can take three or four books and it doesn't weigh anymore. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's like, I can't wait to get home and start reading my real book, <laughs> mm -hmm. which is a much better experience. Are yes. you one of those people that sniffs the books? No. <laughs> I no. love the smell of old pages. Oh, yeah. No, makes yeah. me sneeze. I'm allergic to that. <laughs> that's actually the smell of mold and decay. <laughs> and I'm allergic when to that. I was an undergraduate, I worked in the library, and my job was to to restack books up in the stacks. And the, the, the top stacks where nobody ever really went unless you were like a graduate student. Mm. And everything just smelled old and dank and... Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Love that old moldy yeah. smell. <laughs> yeah. I can either confirm or deny that I ever smelled mimeograph paper. Uh, oh, oh yeah, <laughs> that was a tragedy when we switched over to uh, to Xerox. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's another name for it. They've got there's a there's an automated one that you don't have to do with the sheets. You know, you guys, I'm a teacher, and I, my first teaching gig was kindergarten. And uh, <laughs> a little trivia about me. And uh, so you had to you had to use this paper, right, that you had to make the the model from, and then put mm -hmm. it in the machine that you ran by hand almost, and then later they were automated. Now there's a big machine that does that. That still exists. Really. Yeah, it looks like a it looks like a giant copier, and it's just cheaper than whatever the toner is. Hmm. So it That's takes kind of the photo. It's kind of, I forgot the name of it, but it takes the photo. It makes the it makes the imprint that you need, and then and then oh. that's the thing. We used yeah, a machine really like cool. that in Papua New Guinea. It it was it was like that. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh gosh. Uh, I'll think of it. I'll think of it yeah. afterward. Some teacher yeah. will eventually, you know, let us know. But yeah, so it's somewhere in between the Xerox copier and and those old mimeographs. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Huh? It still smells too. You can still sniff it. I mean, 
<laughs> the paper comes out a little wet. <laughs> Just don't snort. No. <laughs> okay. Hey. You know what that is? That means we have some. Uh, we have some feedback. Ooh. I just decided that's that. That's what that means. Um, we have uh, some feedback from Lisa Hendy. Uh, regarding Lisa. Yeah, yes. Remember her? Uh, she's. Uh, this is regarding episode 285. Thank you so very much for sharing Adam's campaign. That's her son, Adam. His music has been such a gift for our family. We're praying that by sharing this gift with others, he'll bring great joy to many other families. Thank you for supporting him in his pursuit of this dream. And so if you weren't around at uh, on episode 285, or you, you have no idea what I'm talking about, Adam uh, it has an Indiegogo um, campaign going on. It's still, I think there's 10 days left, mm -hmm. and Adam is trying to raise money to, uh, to produce his debut solo album, and uh, he plays Celtic music, um, and... I'll, we'll put a link to this in the show notes. And uh, looking at the page right now, looks like he's trying to raise five thousand dollars. So far, uh, one thousand nine hundred and seventeen dollars have been have been raised. So, if you haven't uh, checked out Adam's Indiegogo site, um, please do. And uh, looks like now this is one of those um, flexible funding campaigns, which means that if you fund something or you put a pledge down, it will go to Adam regardless of whether he reaches the $5,000 goal or not. So just be aware of that. So, uh, But that's pretty cool. I hope that he raises the amount of money he needs to get that album uh, produced and recorded and all that kind of stuff. Excellent. Just wanted yeah, to and if you don't follow Lisa, she posts a lot of, uh, a lot of clips of a lot of little videos of, mm -hmm. of Adam and and actually, I think her whole family, her her other son and, and husband also, they get together and play and jam, and they're very musical. Let's see, you yeah. can hear a little bit of it right here at the beginning of his video, I think. Let's see. That's when I got on the guitar. And then he plays this thing, I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but it's like a wind. There it is. Anyway, so you can watch the whole video over on the Indiegogo uh, link. Just do an, a search for Indiegogo and Adam Hendy, H-E-N-D-E-Y. Excellent. Yeah. So I just wanted to mention that because it's always exciting here when we get uh, feedback. All right. So continue. I'm sorry. Anything? No? Okay. What's going on? I love to see those videos of people who, who they, they with an iPad where they do one little musical piece and then they mm. copy it and then they play over it and copy it and play over it and copy it. And before you know it, they've got this whole jam going on with themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can do amazing things with uh, iPads and tablets and phones and stuff like that. Um, I, I prefer the more traditional instruments, but yeah. <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty uh, I mean, it's pretty, I mean, it's still the same sort of artistry involved. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the same talent. So, yeah. Exactly. You know what's coming to Atlanta? The most bizarre combination of musical acts. Uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire and Chicago are going to be performing together. Wow. Um, I love that. At a venue here. What, what's that outdoor place up, up by by your neck of the woods? Um, um, oh, the, the open, open and, Amphitheater? And no, no, no. It's the open air thing. Yeah. No, it's not the Verizon. Is it? I think so. Yeah, like... Up, up near the North Point uh, Mall. Oh, it's down like down the street, like from Kennesaw. You go out there. The people bring the candelabras and the wine and the stuff. <laughs> Are you talking about? Um, oh, that's uh, more in town. Um, yeah, yeah. Brain, I'm brain dead now. It's, yeah, what is it called? Um, it starts with a C. Uh, yeah, it's up. It's at, at a park, right? Yeah. Oh, whatever. Anyway, they're coming to play there. <laughs> Actually, that sounds like a good combination. That doesn't sound too... Chastain. Well, I thought... I, yes, yes. And I thought, what the heck is this? What the heck is this? And then I thought, oh my gosh, they have two of the best brass sections in mm -hmm. in the 70s. Mm -hmm. That's exactly... That's that's what? what I was just thinking. They both 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 had, had brass as part of their, their backing. So it yeah. fits pretty well, actually. 
Yeah. Earth, Wind, Fire, Atlanta. How about that? Tickets. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, Chicago, like, Earth, Wind, and Fire. I can just imagine the crowd that's going to show up, though. I mean, it's right? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be an eclectic group. <laughs> yeah. What are you saying, Steve? Well, <laughs> I went to. I, what was it? I went to something, and, you know, and it was one of those 60s, 70s groups, you know, and and the young people were, there were some young people there, but it was like, you don't get it, do you? <laughs> <laughs> it was all the people in their 50s and 60s that were like, yeah! <laughs> they went as a curiosity. I had, but that's funny that you said that. Uh, classes started last week, uh, so we're we're. We just completed our second week of classes at the college, and one of the things that they do in that second week, after kids are you know settling into their classes and stuff, is that the student activities puts on some some things at lunchtime every day. So they bring in outside um, vendors, and the and the student fees pay for lunch. You know, so if you're there at lunchtime, you can go get you know burgers or whatever it is that they have for the day, and they always have a DJ, and every day they get a different DJ. And so I, I went to go have lunch with them one day, and I was standing in line with a couple of colleagues and some students from a class that had just let out. And I hear the DJ before I see him, and he goes, old school, blah, 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 my DJ J or whatever. And I and I by, when I got close enough to see the guy, he could have been like my dad, all right? <laughs> 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 and he was playing. He says, oh, today? Hey, we're gonna do Motown, and he was playing some great oldies, and and I looked up after a while because one of the kids that was in line with me turned around and said, "This guy's really feeling it." And I looked up, <laughs> and I was playing some Marvin Gaye or something, and he was getting into the song, and I'm like, "You, this is wasted on all you young people." <laughs> mm. You remember a few years ago there was that short-lived disco revival? Was there really? There was, yeah. The young people were like pulling out all this, you know, Casey and the Sh Sunshine Band and all oh. this kind of stuff. And You'll be luckily, careful what you say about disco now. No, I'm just saying, but luckily it, it didn't last long. But a couple of days ago, one of the, there's a young woman that works in my office. She's like 26, and she was looking at this catalog of clothes. And it, oh. and it was all this stuff that was like tie-dye and all these wild colors with all these little things hanging off of it and everything. And it was just like something Goldie Hawn would have worn on lap in. <laughs> and she was like, oh, this is cool. This is all new age stuff. And I was like, no, no, right. no, That's no. 60s. no. I know. It's all the 60s, that wild flower child stuff. Apparently, it's coming back. <laughs> well, the only thing worse was the mod period with the big uh, must. Oh, I'm sorry. And the big hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Are you guys playing uh, me or something? Uh, I don't know. I to say mustache, right? Man, we're really, talk we're really a bunch of old folks. We're today, old aren't folks. We? Hey, the stash <laughs> is universal. The stash is it universal. It is the old people. The old people show. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, speaking of old people, 35 years ago, I was a college freshman, and... Uh, I was interviewed for this 50 at 50 thing that my university's doing, and I and I posted the interview because why not? But I started looking through the pictures and I and I saw me, I saw myself in one of the pictures, and I had to look at it for more than a minute because I wasn't entirely sure it was me. <laughs> <laughs> right. I I kind of had the same experience uh, when California uh, this earlier in the week. And uh, Karen was showing me some of the things that my mom had kept over the years, and one was a uh, like a, a, a mini yearbook from my pilot training um, in the Air Force, and a picture of me kind of you know uh, posing in front of a T-38, and I'm like, I, yeah, I guess that's me. And then I'm looking at the, all these group pictures, trying to pick myself out, and I couldn't, I wasn't sure. Everybody <laughs> <had a> stash <laughs> looked like me. And uh, and then I found one of uh, uh, my college days when uh, my roommates and I decided to go to a game, a football game. I think it was against Georgia uh, in November at the uh, Jordan Hare Stadium in uh, Auburn. I think the temperature was like 30 something degrees, and we were in shorts and dress shirts and ties. 
<laughs> wow. Yeah. And well, tell me, please tell me, were they those little cheerleader shorts too? Because good heavens. Well, I had you know those short shorts were kind of uh, in in uh, style back then. Yeah. Those California short shorts. What were we thinking? Opies? I know. I don't know. What, what were we? Ocean, Ocean Pacific. Yeah. Okay, you were thinking, you were thinking that you looked great. That's what you were thinking. And I did. I'm, I'm, I'm going to break in here with uh, Pat Padley's comment in the chat room. You're dating yourselves, people. Absolutely. <laughs> well, nobody else is dating me. Might as well date myself. <laughs> All I got to say is, Pat Padley, your time is coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I've got the photos to prove it. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Well, so should we find some kind of Catholic vent for this episode? <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> oh. Isn't there a quiz posted in the uh, show notes or something? Well, I mean, there are, there are a few to choose from, and also uh, there's a, an option to talk about the rise and fall of the Catholic blogosphere. Did you see that article? In the you know, I saw that article, and I was going to not comment on it, and I'll tell you why. Okay. <laughs> Which means now I'm commenting on it. Yeah. I think that it's really kind of insulated. I mean, I think that in that article he's talking about a very, his own little personal mm -hmm. limited experience, and I, I essentially disagree with a lot of what he's saying. Yeah, I, d I did a quick scan of it as well, and, and uh, I'm not a blogger, so I, I, I really can't weigh in too much on it, but I didn't think, I f kind of felt the same way, Maria, that yeah. maybe you might feel strongly about that, but it doesn't seem to me that uh, his experience is universal. Yeah, I don't think so. I think he, you know, there's a mistake that a lot of people make with blogging, and and he's and he says it in there. He says, you know, it's a one-way communication, and it's my and it's my soapbox. No, it's not. That's not the point of blogging. Yeah. Um. And so I think that, I think at that point in the article, I kind of just tuned it out or turned it off or whatever. But there is an article in there that's really cool, and that is the one about the 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 guy who was in Esquire magazine, which I don't ordinarily promote, but it's a good article about the guy that put on four uniforms. Mm -hmm. And one of them was that he put on a cassock. And he didn't try to pass himself off as a priest. He said that he was honest in his dealings, but he just wore a cassock all day, mm -hmm. and people responded to him in a very unique way. Did you did you happen to read it, Father Corey? I did, I, I did. And it's kind of interesting, too, that he chose Chicago, which is a very Catholic city still. I mean, it was settled by a lot of very Catholic groups, uh, Italians, Irish, and so on. Um, yeah, and so there very much still is a Catholic culture in the city of Chicago, even as worldly and secular as it really is as well. You know, I mean, he's, he's talking about he's walking downtown Michigan Avenue wearing a cassock. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and he, for the most part, had what sounds to me like a, a really positive experience where people acknowledged him mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, made respectful. eye contact with him. Yeah, I, I like that. What other um, uniforms did he wear, and what kind of reactions did he receive? Well, it was really a really neat thing. He wore <clears throat> he wore doctor's a doctor's uniform. He got he got some scrubs and and a lab coat, and realized <clears throat> that he didn't necessarily look like a doctor. So he started to pretend to be really engaged in reading things on his phone, like he was responding to. Mm -hmm. A medical emergency or something like that, and people essentially gave him a wide berth and actually took care of him. You know, they yeah. they let him come into storefronts. It was a hot day, so he'd walk and go inside a place to cool off and not necessarily want to purchase anything or sit down to eat. And they would want to bring him water and things like that mm -hmm. because they could see that he was working. And um, and but the curious ones, and I don't know, you might want to chime in on this one too, Father, is that. When he was the laborer, when he was, when he either looked like uh, a, a, a mall cop, right, or a security mm -hmm. cop, they left him alone yeah. and ignored him and let him fall into the background as part of the as part of the tapestry. But when he was uh, a mechanic, a tire guy, they totally ignored him. Yeah, he was just he was just the background. He was uh, a nobody. He was just some guy on the street, you know, that was just going to his his job, you know, and uh, yeah, he was he was just ignored. And yeah, the, the mall cop, he really kind of, and it's kind of funny too, where he talks about. And this guy, he makes it clear he is anti-uniform. He hates uniforms. He wants nothing to do with uniforms. He says his typical wear is like t-shirt and jeans when he's writing. And 
which you could argue is his uniform, but that's another story. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I had that same yeah, reaction, sorry. too. <laughs> Everybody kind of has their own uniforms, you know. We, we kind of fall into our pattern of where that we find the most comfortable. But that's just my opinion. Um, but he said, like, when he was wearing the security men uniform, and he wore a very professional one. You know, he had the choice of looking really slovenly and... You know, you've, you've seen those guys where they're sitting there and they've got their feet kicked up and they're they're there, they're doing their security job, but they could be anywhere and really not care either way. Um, but no, he said he was, you know, dressed very professionally, um, very much, uh, you know, had the, the, the equipment for it, had the whole works. And he said he actually felt like he had to sit up a little straighter, stand up a little straighter, kind of, you know, take the, the at ease position, you know, the hands behind your back and things like that. It was very interesting to see his, what he felt like his reaction was to being in that uniform that he kind of lifted up into it. You know? And he had the same experience when he was wearing the cassock because um, he said that people would, especially the homeless folks and the, and the, the people who looked a little down and out, that mm -hmm. they would look, look to him with hope and ask for a blessing or ask for something like that and he never you know again he never pretended to be a priest right. he told them he couldn't bless them but there was one scene that i thought was really beautiful that he described where where he gave a 10 dollar bill to a homeless man and said i'm not a priest but i feel you yeah and and so you know and also the women who kind of caught called him out at the cocktail party and said you're not a priest you're not standing like a priest you're not behaving with us like a priest <laughs> <laughs> these women, these women need to meet some of the priests in my diocese. But no, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But um, I loved, but you know what? I love that. I think that he gave some insight into, you know, into for me because I love priests. Um, yeah. You know your your role in the society where you really are an icon and you really are, um, you know, Christ on earth. That these people would be right. looking at, at well, I, you know the. The symbolism of 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 who you are in in the right. cassock and responding to it. I'd love to show the part about him walking around as a priest to priests who disagree with the with wearing the collar, and unfortunately, there's still quite a few of them out there that say, "Oh, I don't need to be the, wear the collar to be a priest." I, you know, the priest, you know, it, it's it's not the collar that makes a priest, and and that's true. You know, you, you have to be a good priest whether or not you're wearing the collar, but the collar is a recognizable symbol that. This person is something different. You know, this person has dedicated their life to something more than themselves. There's, there's a whole interesting philosophy in my mind about uniforms in general. I mean, uniform means what? One form? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, like, when you're thinking about, like, a, a military unit or a marching band or something mm -hmm. like that, the idea is to make everybody look the same. There's, you're taking away some individuality. Exactly. But then some of our uniforms, like some of the ones we're talking about here, are meant to convey something to the general public, something specific about this person. Right. right. So there's it's like this duality of the whole concept of uniforms, which I find fascinating. Yeah. Well, that's you know you see a guy with with a um, a shirt with the the badge on it, and you're gonna think police officer. You know, with a badge and a gun, you're gonna think okay, police officer. If I need help, I'm gonna go talk to him. Um, Again, you see a man in a black shirt with the white tab. In many places still, they say, oh, that's a priest. If I need religious help, that's the one I go to. You see a guy in grungy overalls and a crescent wrench or you know, a, a socket wrench. Oh, hey, that's a mechanic. If I need to work on my car, I'm going to go talk to him, you know, and so on. And we make judgments mm -hmm. based on that, on those uniforms. But we also behave a certain way because he certainly didn't give ten dollars when he was dressed as a mechanic. No, he gave the he gave the help when he was dressed um, yeah, as a priest. And this is a conversation that we have as educators all the time. I I mean I teach in a technical college, mm. and we encourage our students as part of their work ethic uh, instruction that isn't really a grade, but you know it's kind of woven through the 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 curriculum, is that they need to dress for success. In the field that they're studying in, you know, so yeah. so our business students dress, uh, you know, mo more often than not business casual instead of you know formal business. Um, but our nursing students are dressed in scrubs, and um, our our welders have coats, leather coats that they that they carry if they don't, you know, I don't think that they're wearing them in an English class, but they're carrying it around um, as a reminder that that's who they are, that's what they're studying for. Right. 
I think uniforms are very important. Can you imagine a marching band, Steve, uh, out there on the football field during halftime, and everybody's just wearing their regular clothing? I can. I yes, there are, is one out there that I would point to. Oh, Stanford. Okay. Stanford well. breaks all the rules of what a marching band should be. All of the rules, mm -hmm. and they are the they are disdained by everybody else <laughs> because of that. <laughs> <laughs> or, or for me, for instance, you know, um, all of a sudden people are boarding an airplane, and I, I say, "Excuse me, I'm in my civilian clothes. Excuse me, or, what what is this guy? Who is this? Right. Guy? Why am I having to get out of his way? Well, I'm the pilot. Well, no, you're not. You're, you're wearing regular clothes. You know, yet exactly when you when you see pilots and flight attendants walking in the airports, you mm -hmm. you know immediately just by seeing our uniform, who who we are, and right. and and believe it or not, that uh, kind of uh, expresses a little bit of authority as well. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's it's important. Same thing with as we've mentioned with police yeah. officers and religious and everything else. I think uniforms are very important. I do too. I mean, because you have legal authority that comes along with that uniform mm -hmm. or that aircraft, right? Am I right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think it's important that people know who the authorities are in that oh. in that situation. And I, I don't think it's not necessarily. Oh, well, just, just to be the devil's advocate. Oh, go ahead. I don't think it's necessarily authority either. You know, when I. When I see, when I'm in an airport and I see a guy with the you know the the epaulets and a white uniform, it's like okay, he's a pilot. He's got years of training, years of practice, years of you know experience getting that plane from point A to point B and keeping it in one piece. That's a good thing, you know, and that's something to respect. What were you gonna say? Ms. But I think, but yeah, I'm just I'm just gonna say, is is Stanford's uh, music good? I, I mean, uh, I'm sure. It is. It's not. Oh, it's not. You it's know, terrible. I, I, they're, I mean, they're if not you're bringing, talking, so they're not bringing that. They're not bringing a level of uh, professional or authenticity. Well, if, if we're going to talk about their marching band in particular, it's it's a farce and it's meant to be a farce. Oh, I mean, okay. Oh, the people right. walk out there with, you know, they'll carry a toilet and hit on it with. Oh, a, okay. I mean, it's 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 meant to be a farce, and they, you know, that's why. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. there's a whole soapbox I can get on about that band. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm sorry, because I, I, since I don't know what, what the farce is, I just thought that oh, they weren't just, in, in a proper uniform, but I assumed that they made good music. But yeah. I was going to say that Jeff can fly a plane in jeans and still fly it very, I, safely mm -hmm. and well. Yeah. That, no, I agree. I agree. Yeah. But, you know, I wonder if I did just show up to work in jeans and a t-shirt, if if that would have any effect on the way I actually flew the airplane. It might. I don't know. Do you think? Do you think? You know, I'm trying no. to think of the days when I was an adjunct and we could wear jeans. I, I taught in a very liberally arts college. Um, and, I mean, I, I worked with a colleague who used to clean out horse stalls and then go to teach her literature class in a dirty T-shirt and jeans. Mm. Um, I, th that was too much for me, but mm. but yeah, I, I would I, you know I'd, I'd wear a, a, a blouse and some jeans to teach. I, obviously, I don't do that anymore uh, because of the setting that I'm in and uh, and the position that I have. Interesting. I am adhering to a uniform that I did not realize I was adhering to. Yeah. But anyway. You're such a. <laughs> Oh, I've become the man. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, guess what time it is? Oh, it's time to finish. The yes, it's that time where we hear the golden uh, dulcet tones of Pat Gone. And thank you, Pat, for introducing the picks of the week. And speaking of Pat Gone. What's your pick of the week, Maria? I am going to go with Pat Gone as my pick of the week. Huh. She has, a, well, not Pat, but her episode 192 <laughs> of Among Women. Uh huh. <laughs> it's called Finding God's Will in Hollywood or Wherever You Are. And I think it goes so well with today's um, episode talking about going out there. You know, we're in our uniforms, we're, we're in our roles. And um, it doesn't matter what we do or where we are. We need to be Christ-like there. And so she's got this great um, interview with uh, with a Hollywood actress and producer named Kristen Gizak, I think is her name. I, I forgot how to, it's pronounced. But um, she's, she, you know, she's living, she's living the faith uh, where she is. And so 
talks about that and, and how we ought to all do that, you know. And, and I'm sure you do. Do you ever pray before you fly? Before you? Uh... Yeah, I do. Um, and especially when I go out there, um, I have a little routine that I do when I'm doing the walk around, which is usually every other leg. And uh, I, I actually will, to the nose of the airplane, I'll, I'll make the sign of the cross on the, uh, on the, you know, the tip of the nose of the airplane, and you know, kind of say in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, and you know, ask God to protect the uh, the airplane and the crew and uh, all the passengers, and and help me to make good decisions as far as you know, using good judgment for, you know, finding proper paths through weather, and and uh, pray for. Good weather and no mechanical problems and no people problems and uh, sometimes yeah, I, you know I, I'll, I'll petition my uh, uh, my patron saint Saint Joseph of Cupertino uh, <laughs> to keep the plane in the air. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I do. I do really. Oh, I believe it. I I pray before teaching every time I go give a lesson that I know that I'm going to be speaking to people. Um, you know, I always ask for the Holy Spirit to put the words in my mouth that are going to, you know, be good for them and not hurt them. You know, a couple of times I've like taking work. taking the runway about to uh, take off. You know, I'll make the same sign of the cross, but I, I stopped doing that because it kind of uh, makes my co-pilots kind of uncomfortable. They think maybe this is it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what is he doing? Is he gonna... Uh, start yeah, Allah, Allah, is good or whatever, you know. So no. Right, right. Well, this is a it's a great episode for us to just think about and, and for men to hear too. Sometimes you know, um, to hear about these things. But Pat also is calling for something interesting in this episode. So she's asking for some feedback that is putting herself on the spot. So if you want to ask Pat a question that she'll answer hmm. on on among women, you can you can send oh, that feedback. Oh, AMA. This yeah, yeah, that's right. She's doing an, an Among Women AMA. So that's my pick of the week, Among Women number 192. All right, great. Always here to, good to hear uh, about Pat and her awesome show. Um, who would like to go next? I can go next since yeah. I've got one. I'm going a uh, bit more geeky. And I don't know, maybe you've, you've mentioned this one before, Jeff, uh, the Synergy Project. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Mm -mm. No. Okay. I, for some reason, I thought you've talked about it before, but this is a really cool uh, computer uh, add-on. It's basically a virtual KVM, keyboard video mouse switch. Oh, except I the video. Uh, what it does is allow you to have a server computer. So, like for example, right now I'm sitting at my iMac, and of course, what I'm using for my camera is my iMac, and the keyboard and mouse is hooked up to the iMac. Next to me, I've got a second monitor in my MacBook Pro, and the second monitor is hooked up to the MacBook Pro. I can take my mouse and go from my, like right now it's sitting on, you can't see this because, you know, you're not seeing what I'm looking at, but my mouse is sitting at the MacBook, and then I slide over, and now I'm sitting at the dock, the, 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 uh, the show notes on my MacBook Pro, and I can switch back and forth virtually copy and paste between the two, copy and paste text. Um, you can't, you know, like, I can't just take a, a window and drag it over to the iMac. It's not a, it doesn't do video switching like that. But the fact that I can sit here and completely control my, my MacBook from the iMac keyboard, it's really, a, it's really a cool trick. You can do it, and it's not just for Macs. It's cross-platform. It works on Windows, works on Linux, and on Macs. So, you know, in theory, if you've got each one of these different platforms, you could have, you know, three monitors, three computers, one keyboard and mouse, and just back and forth, and it does it all over the network. So if you got Wi-Fi or wired internet for all three computers, it does it automatically. Can you imagine me trying to do this? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually easy enough to set up. I mean, literally. I'm gonna give it a try this week. I've got two computers. I've got two yeah. iPads and an iPhone. Let me see how I can make things explode for Jeff next weekend. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Now, now the, it won't work with iPhones. It won't work with Android. It's just for desktop computers or laptops. Yeah, I have. I used to use that actually, and um, and you can you can specify exactly where the other screen is. Exactly. You go off to that side of the screen. It goes. It jumps over to the other yeah. one. Yeah. I'd use this software when it first came out. Oh, probably five years ago or so. And at the time, you had to actually edit a text file saying monitor one or computer one, give it a name, list location, this, you know, do this, do this. You know, we actually had to edit a text file. Now you install the server on your main computer 
And then when you install the client side, same software, you just tell it as a client, they call it, it'll pop up on your server computer. Hey, a new computer has been found. Where do you want to locate it? You click on it and it's done. Hmm. It, is, just, it really works pretty well. It does. And it, it works really, really slick. Just be able, like I said, just to know, like, I've got all I've got running on the Mac right now, my iMac, is the, um, is this Hangout. But all my other stuff is over here on the other screen, and it's running on the other computer, you know. And it's just really slick to be able to back and forth, back and forth without any difficulty. So that's my pick of the week is the Synergy project. Yes, I I, I um, add my vote of confidence on that. That's one. cool. I'd never heard of that before. That's pretty cool. Steve, yeah, how about yourself? What you got? <laughs> well, I don't know. This is kind of out there a little bit, but first of all, I have to confess, I am not a fan of fall and winter. And those are not my seasons. <laughs> I like spring and summer, and then when summer starts to end, you know, and then you start, you know, it starts getting toward fall, yeah, the weather's nice and everything, but I don't really like it. I, I could do without fall and winter, but I do like the fact that at this time of the summer is when all of the stuff, all of the the fruits and the vegetables and everything like that are are at their peak Ooh, and yes. and so like I think I mentioned before uh, you know huckleberries and Saskatoon berries and everything so this is pie season for me mm. <laughs> I mm. like this time of year so uh, go out and have some pie that's my <laughs> go have some pie some berry well, pie or fruit pie this is when this is when I start to can so Ooh. so I'm cool. gonna yes start you making yeah. some. I can, I can. <laughs> All right, perfect. And uh, my pick of the week, I was quickly, while we were doing the show, trying to think, okay, what am I going to come up with? Well, maybe I can find a great Catholic app. And so I started doing some searching for that. And then I found this article um, on our Google Doc that uh, Lynn had prepared for us from Epic Pew. We've, we've talked about epicpew.com before. And they have a recent article uh, July 31st, 2015, top 10 apps for Catholics. And many of the apps mentioned in this article we've mentioned as picks in the past. But if you want to kind of see a, what they think are the top 10 apps, uh, which I, I gr agree with, actually, uh, check out the article, uh, Top Apps for Catholics on Epic Pew. We'll have a link to that in the show notes. And uh, likely you can hear the, uh, the music coming up in the background, so that means that it's time for us to talk about ways that we can follow and uh, see uh, other things going on, other activities going on with our co-hosts. So, Father Corey, tell us about how we can hear some of your homilies. Well, you can find my homilies at frcory.org. That's F-R-C-O-R-Y.org. I do have them set up as a podcast, so you can uh, subscribe to that through iTunes or through your regular uh, podcast program if you're not using iTunes. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook, Twitter. Well, face yeah, Facebook, you can find my Facebook page. We should have talked about that mm -hmm. at frcorystika. Um, yeah, I got bit by the Facebook uh, police. Um and Twitter, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and so on at Fr Corey Stika. Yeah, we'll talk about that next show. Uh, I would yeah. like to talk about that. Okay, thank you, Father and uh, Maria. How would we find uh, some blogging stuff from you? Some blogging stuff at mariamjohnson.com. <laughs> it's a blog by Maria Johnson, <laughs> and uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Bago. And I'll be speaking in a couple of weeks at St. Peter Chanel Church oh, to the really? women's group. So on on yeah, I'm badass you saints exactly uh, in anticipation of my book coming out. Okay. It is on the tenth, September tenth. What day of the week is that? I think it's a Thursday night. Okay. Well, hopefully I'm in town. That'll be fun to see and hear you, Steve. Everything Esteban. Okay. Everything Esteban. Yeah. You can go look at some uh, photos from Chicago, and then hopefully in the next few days I'll have some uh, photos up of Glacier National Park. Excellent. Can't. Yeah wait to see that and I am the airline pilot guy you can see all the stuff at airlinepilotguy.com and uh, well it looks like that's it for this week's episode look forward to seeing you all again back here next week on Catholic Weekend and hey have a great Catholic Weekend take care and God bless SQPN 
leading the way in Catholic new media. I love the speed up at the end. <laughs> I can quickly get this in. Blah, 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 <laughs> I'm still not used to that. It's so much easier just to end the show and then after the fact go and put the the outro in. As I do with my airline pilot guy show. So I never have to worry about scrambling like that. Well, maybe that's a good thing though. Keeps yeah. you from doing another three hour podcast. Oh, I mean, <laughs> yeah. That's probably uh, it. Watch it, buddy. That's it. <laughs> I can take it. <laughs> He also knows I listen to the three-hour podcast. So, <laughs> uh, it's amazing true, how true confessions. I pop in every once in a while just to see if it really is three three hours long. And it, and, <laughs> and it really is long. Yeah, I've seen it a couple of times. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a lot of fun, and um, yeah, sometimes it's just amazing to me that what we've been going for that long. Mm-hmm. Is sometimes that guy? I, what? Is that guy in Miami? Is he stationed yeah. in Miami? That's why we is, call him Miami. Is that his, um, yeah, he, course, he, that's where he's actually working. Yeah, he uh, he lives there, and uh, his wife uh, works in hospitality for a hotel uh, in South Beach. Uh, he lives in Coconut Grove. Oh. And, um, he works for Land Cargo, uh, L A N, uh, like a the cargo division of Land Chile. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he has a uh, he he holds dual citizenship uh, between Ecuador and uh, the United States. Wow! Yeah. So an interesting guy. He's a little hyper. He's a little hyper, but he's interesting. Yeah, he's okay. That's it. Uh, people say that uh, when when they listen to the show, when it just when it was just me, they could go like speed up the podcast playback like one point five or whatever, and still you know, understand <laughs> what I was saying. I mean, it really kind of helps to cut down the length of the program. <laughs> But then every time that uh, Miami Rick starts talking, they have to slow it back down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's already at 1.5. That's his normal speed. <laughs> anyway, but I have a lot of fun with my with my co-hosts and uh, kind of you know lends a different flavor. Mm-hmm. So mm. anyway, you know what? Actually, it's kind of like um, this show. But now I'm doing it for my aviation show. And, uh, now, now, Doctor Steph, she's got obviously she's got her pilot's license. Mm-hmm. Is that just something she does as a hobby, or? Yeah, she's um, uh, she's a physiatrist or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. Does like she's a doctor of ophthalmology? No, not ophthalmology. Uh, do what's do mean? Osteopathy. Oh, there we yes. go. Osteopathic. Yes, osteopathy, and uh, she does that kind of work. And um, she's just the kind of person that wants to do adventurous stuff. Like she's a she learned how to skydive and nice. uh, learn how to fly airplanes. And really, no reason for her to have a commercial license, but she just wanted to. It was a challenge. She thought, "I'm I'll nice. get a commercial license and a multi-engine license and all that kind of stuff." So, hmm. yeah, cool. yeah. So it's I think it's a good mix. Um, you know, we're all pilots on the show, and uh, two of us professional airline pilots and the other general aviation pilot. Nice. So, yeah, I think I'm fun. Uh, so, let's see. Anything, any big plans for you all this weekend? Yard work. No, I did line yesterday. <laughs> you know what I uh, got to do yesterday? I, I uh, was able to pluck out um, the 30 to 40 bricks that I had laid in my lawn in the backyard to help me get the U-Haul truck unstuck. Oh boy. Did you hear about that, Steve? No. What happened? <laughs> well, um, you know, Mr. Einstein here had a great idea because uh, Chris <laughs> uh, had some, some heavy pieces of furniture moved down to his new apartment down in Orlando. So I rented a U-Haul. You know, the smallest, you know, the 10-foot truck. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm thinking, it's not that big of a truck. Couldn't be that heavy. And um, and I'm thinking, well, you know, to make it easier on me, I would uh, pull the U-Haul to the back of the house. And Steve's been to the house before, mm-hmm. so knows that we have a kind of that, a walkout basement. That door um, there in that in that back bedroom. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so it, it apparently had been raining quite a bit the the previous few days, and but I'm thinking, well, no problem. We'll be able to get that thing out of there once I get it down. No problem getting it down. 
but then I realized that the wheels were spinning trying to move the truck back up that incline, my next door neighbor's uh, driveway. Mm -hmm. And um, so it was, you know, tearing up my lawn and, you know, making, it's just, my lawn is a huge mess back there. (laughs) Um, I'm hoping the grass will grow and cover it up, all the scars. But uh, so I thought, yeah, brilliant. I have all these bricks, you know, like in in the right uh, outside the back uh, door. Uh And uh, so I'll put those bricks down and kind of like make a little track, a little path. And uh, so I'd like move about three, four feet at a time and then put some more bricks down. And uh, it was sort of working, but then sometimes the truck would kind of move off of the bricks, you know, because it was kind of slippery. It was raining. And then I started looking at the how the, the, the backyard really starts sloping up toward the end of that. And I'm thinking, there's no way that this is going to work. So I finally gave up, called a wrecker service, and they brought out a truck with a winch and winched me out of there. So it was not a really good idea at all. <laughs> no, <laughs> lessons learned. Ninety-five dollar mistake <laughs> on top of the five hundred dollars that it cost to rent the U-Haul and drive it down to mm. Florida. Not to mention the work today to make it nice again. Oh yeah, yeah I, I should have just given up immediately. Well, I shouldn't have driven it back in the backyard. That that, that was my number one mistake. But anyway. And I don't, you know, I I remember a few years back uh, renting a U-Haul and taking some huge furniture to Alyssa, my oldest daughter, in uh, in North Carolina, and thinking to myself, I'm never doing this again. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that's and, what everybody and, says. And when you they... still have, <laughs> and you still have one more. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just gonna have to say, look, either you do it, or you know, we have to pay some to do it. I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> No, you just say, you know, maybe the good news is that this is... budget. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> your IKEA budget, go buy your own furniture. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that is probably when you when you add up all of the time and, you know, but you figure these things out after the fact. You know, you've gone through it twice and you and you still have one more time to go through this. Maybe that's it. Maybe the third time is the charm and you do. Just give a budget to her and say go. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's uh, my parents are starting to hint about moving somewhere else for retirement, and I've already given them notice. Uh, I'll call you. Don't call me. <laughs> <laughs> I must be really no, don't tell me you're gonna be like that commercial on TV with the the, the, the internet commercial mm. where the girl is trying to get moved and she's calling all her friends and they're all doing something. And the way that they state what they're doing is uh, unique. <laughs> I haven't seen that one. Yeah. <laughs> My back, my back is out, and she's doing yoga. Another guy is like he's, you know, he's he's boxed in or something. He's surrounded by stuff. Yeah. The one guy who's fishing in the middle of the lake. That's one of the number one reasons why I never bought a pickup truck. Because immediately you're (laughs) the one who gets called. (laughs) That's right. And there's a point when 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 the beard just isn't going to be enough. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh, I've I've done my fair share moving. It's just like oof. I, my my parents seem like every time we turn around, they're planning on moving again. It's just like you know what, I'm done. <laughs> I've done this. Too many you need times. to put some roots down, you know, and, and stay. That's right. Yeah. Well, you need I, to you know, settle down. I've started to think about what I want to do when I retire, you know. And I've got all these mixed emotions and mixed thoughts. Of mm. so, like, so the question is, where does a Catholic who I mean, who wants a good Catholic community but also wants to be near the mountains, where does he go? Rome. <laughs> Duh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I can afford to retire. Or else <laughs> let me uh, you know, pitch a tent there in the portico of St. Peter's. <laughs> I don't know. Where would somebody go um, in the mountains? One of those where we can find some place in Montana. Oh. <laughs> Make our own little Catholic enclave. No. Yeah. Well, that that uh, Lady of the Mountains or whatever they call the uh, big giant statue and uh, oh yeah, Our Lady the of the Lady Rockies, of the yeah, by yeah. Butte. Oh, is there really? A, is that where you would go? Is there a community right there? I ran in that. Uh, there's really not. I mean, it, it's a it's a traditionally Catholic community because there were a lot of uh, Irishmen who settled there with the mine. I don't know how Catholic it is still, but I refer you to the comments I made some moments ago about I hate winter. 
<laughs> so you want mountains, but you don't want winter. Uh, the yeah. two generally go together in the well, not well in the northern Brazil. New Mexico. Northern New Mexico is not too bad. Yeah, uh, it'd be they cold. winter too, as I understand. Yeah. yeah, but it's it's temporary winter. You know, it snows, <laughs> it's there for about a week, and then it goes away. Listen to me, temporary winter. Isn't winter always temporary? Yeah. It comes, it goes. Oh, the philosopher comes out. <laughs> and, the, and the semantic. <laughs> Flagstaff. So Maine, Maine is not an option. <laughs> Have you ever been to Flagstaff? I like Flagstaff. That's not a bad, bad little town. That's, that's a pretty area. Yeah, I like that. And there's a, a college town would be a nice benefit. Because mm-hmm. there's actually stuff going on. Mm-hmm. And I like being around young people, you know. Mm-hmm. That's why he likes hanging around us. Flagstaff. Uh, yeah. After, uh, after sure. the old-timey episode from today, yeah, that's the perfect yeah, really combination, <laughs> right? Nostalgia 101. <laughs> we're gonna get it. We're gonna get some feedback from somebody that says, no, "Where would you send the depends?" <laughs> I think Padley already did that. He's Probably. Yeah. <laughs> no, Mike kind of commented to you in the chat, did you? Hey, Mike Kuypers, are you in the chat room? What do you? Oh, I can't imagine what comment you have to say. <laughs> I'm sure it's an epic comment. With the uh, Mount Sinai, uh, for there you. There we go. There it is. Episode. The what is it? Episode two eighty four, sponsored by Depends. Two eighty seven. There's your title right there. <laughs> yeah, Mike is actually uh, taking notes for us today. Uh, Lynn is um, off doing some kind of a dress rehearsal. I'm not sure exactly what she's doing, but working. Yeah. Working for a living. So, uh, yeah, speaking of working for a living, I need to go grade papers. <laughs> Ooh, fun. All right. My life begins. See you guys next week. All right. Well, thanks for hanging out with us, Maria. Yeah, always a pleasure. Bye, guys. We'll see ya. Okay. Bye. Bye. Um, I guess it's time for us to stop stop the broadcast, and there's only like a few people there anyway, so. Um, so everybody in the chat room, thanks for hanging out with us. We do appreciate it. Mike, thanks for taking the notes. And we'll see you next week, hopefully. Bye.